are redheads going extinct? Now, that is actually an interesting one. Now, the idea normally goes like this. Red-headed people are on their way to extinction because climate change is making it less necessary to be ginger. In fact, you may have even heard some people say it's actually dangerous to have red hair these days. So, should the Ron Weasleys and Hannah Fry's of this world be worried? People with red hair are mutants. Yes, just like the X-Men, although usually wearing significantly less spandex. To have red hair, you need to have a mutation in both of the versions of your MC1R gene, i.e. you need to have inherited that mutation from both your parents. That's because red hair is a recessive gene variant. You need to have that mutation in both copies for it to be noticeable. MC1R stands for melanocortin 1 receptor, and it's the MC1R gene that's responsible for the production of pigments from cells called melanocytes. And there are two important pigments here. Red-headed people get red hair thanks to the increased production of a red pigment called pheomelanin. That pigment is also found in freckles and in countless species other than humans, including birds and some reptiles. Gingerness isn't just a human thing. The second pigment is the dark pigment eumelanin, which redheads produce less of and which results in them having paler skin. Oh, and interestingly, the MC1R mutation that controls the production of these pigments has also been linked to a higher sensitivity to pain and an increased need for anaesthetic during surgery. We don't actually know why that is though, but MC1R has been spotted in human pituitary tissue, glial cells in the nervous system, and in your brain's gray matter. Is it involved in hormones that stimulate pain receptors, or is the pigment itself causing the problem? Who knows? So, okay, redheads might feel more pain, but is that why people think they could go extinct? Well, no. The argument for why they're apparently going extinct comes from the other part of what I just mentioned, the pale skin bit. Reason is, some people think that the mutation spread partly as an adaptation to cloudy skies. Why? Well, when we're hit with UVB rays from the sun, we humans synthesize vitamin D. The melanin in dark skin is a natural sunscreen. It absorbs and dissipates the sun's radiation. Interestingly, if you have dark skin and there is less sunlight around, you can have a problem making enough vitamin D. So paler skin might help with that. Roughly 10% of Irish and Scottish people have red hair, compared to only 2% of the wider world's population. So some think that the traditional red-headed Scottish or Irish look has arisen to help them cope with their weather and make enough vitamin D. But as the world gets hotter, Surely no one will need this adaptation and the MC1R mutation will gradually disappear from the population, right? In a word, no. For starters, it turns out that the story was actually started by a company called Scotland's DNA that sells genetic ancestry testing. And Adam Rutherford, writing in The Guardian, pointed out that the quotes in the story, supposedly from a scientist, were unable to be checked as that person chose to be unnamed. He also points out that there is little evidence that the prevalence of red hair in Scotland and Ireland has anything to do with the climate. It could also be because of the relative isolation of those populations back in their ancestral history. If more people fancied redheads and more mating with redheads happened, there would be more redhead kids. Or maybe the high proportion of redheads is just chance. The story didn't first appear last year either. In 2007, a similar story did the rounds, this time supposedly from Oxford Hair Foundation, and again, completely debunked. Even if climate change was so bad that every single redhead died before they could have kids, that still would not get rid of the MC1R mutation because it's recessive. You can carry a copy without showing it or even knowing you have it. And when two carriers meet up and they have a kid, bam, there's a chance of a redhead again. To completely drive red hair to extinction, every single blonde or brunette carrier would also need to not pass on that single copy to their children. Maybe that could happen but it would take time. Recessive gene variants stick around for a long time in populations, even ones that are much more likely to be harmful than red hair. So rejoice, redheads. Your lives are unlikely to be ruined by climate change. And maybe I'll see you all in the Netherlands, where they throw a huge festival every year for thousands of redheads. Sounds pretty fun. I just need to get some red hair.
If you've ever watched the likes of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre or Deliverance or The Hills Have Eyes, then you'll probably think you have a good idea of what happens when humans inbreed. Namely, psychosis, murderous intentions, webbed fingers and some pretty mean banjo playing skills.